closer we get to the holidays, the more hectic it becomes. And so I know people are ripping and running and working and other things. And so, um, turn your Bibles with me, however, to the, to the book of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 11. I'm just going to read from verse number six. While you're turning, I want to remind us uh, we do have service this weekend. Amen. 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 Do have service this weekend, um, Sunday morning service. It's technically our Christmas service, even though it's the day after. Yeah. Amen. And I want to just encourage you to invite invite your family out to the house of God. Invite them out. We want to pack this place out as quick and as much as possible. It only happens if you open up your mouth about Jesus. So tell somebody. Come on. Only way it happens. And so I want to encourage you to be bold in this season and say, hey, forget about Omicron. Megatron, any other, any other variant, <laughs> praise God. Our God is bigger than any variant. Amen. Amen. As a matter of fact, there's no shadow turning in him, so it don't matter what variant you come up with, <laughs> praise God. Amen. Some of y'all believe that. Some of y'all are like, I don't know, Pastor. Well, bless God. So I just want to remind you, those two services also watch night service. It's the 31st, uh, starts at 9.30 p.m. You're going to want to get there early because it will fill up. It will pack out very, very quickly. Um, even last year during COVID, it was still packed in there. And, and so um, I want to encourage you to get there, you know, as quick as much as possible. I think the family choir, they had their first rehearsal this last Tuesday, uh, but they, I think they're having another one on the 27th. Um, and so if you want to be a part of that and you're able, uh, let me know. I'll get you the details and information so you can go out and participate. That's going to be a good time in the Lord. Um, and so just, just be mindful of those things. Even though it's holiday season, we're not necessarily going on holiday. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. It's Jesus' holiday anyway. Even though he probably wasn't born during December, but that's okay. We'll still celebrate his birth anyway. <laughs> they brought him gifts so we can bring each other gifts. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hebrews 11, verse number 6, it says, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently. Somebody say diligently. Diligently, that's the key word to the scripture, diligently seek him. Tonight I want to talk to us really about the topic, believe again. Amen. Believe again. I'm going to put your Bibles down. Let's pray that the Lord would have his way. Lord Jesus, we thank you right now for your presence. If we know that's in this place, Lord God. Oh God, we thank you for the blood on Calvary, Lord Jesus. Oh God, that you died on the cross for us, Lord. And we pray here tonight, Lord God, that you would help us, Lord God. Anoint me, Lord God, to preach this word straight from the throne room of heaven, Lord God. That it should edify, that it should encourage, Lord God. The strongholds would come down tonight, Lord Jesus, oh God. That your people's faith would grow in here, this place, Lord God. Release miracles, Lord. Release signs, oh God. Release wonders, Lord Jesus, oh God. Do the miraculous tonight, Lord Jesus, oh God. We pray that you would have your way, Lord God. And take full apostolic dominion, control, and authority right now. And command that every spirit that is unlike you, oh God, has to flee at the mention of your name, oh God. But we pray that your presence would be so thick in this place, oh God, that your glory should fall, oh God. Have your way, Lord God, as we give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Somebody shout amen to God. Amen. Glory to God. You may, you may be seated. This is kind of a sermon, more, more of like a message. And I'm just going to give you what the Lord gave me, and then... Uh, We'll let the Holy Ghost work. Scripture starts off, it says, without faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. You can give, praise God. I guess you probably wouldn't be much of a giver if you don't have much faith. <laughs> praise God. But you can give and not have faith and not be pleasing God. You can do lots of things in the church, and without faith, you're not really pleasing God. So it starts off, it says, that without faith, it's, in, it's simply impossible to please, to please God. It's a prerequisite to coming to God. It is faith. The Bible tells us that every man is dwelt a measure of faith. So everyone has a little bit of faith. Even the atheists have faith. I would say it takes more faith to believe in nothing than it does to believe in a God that created everything. That's right. Praise God. At least we have evidence. Y'all just believe in the made-up theories. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. But even then, they have, they have faith. They've been dwelt a measure of faith. Object is really where we put that faith. Well, that faith is in God. And faith is a term that's thrown around a lot in the Bible. And sometimes it's overcomplicated, but it is simply belief in action. It's when you take what you believe and then you act upon it. 
Matter of fact, I would propose to you that your faith is not profiting you anything if you don't put some action behind it. Right. You can say that you believe all day, but until you actually do something according to your belief, what does it matter if you believe? Praise God. If I believe that I have all power and then I don't do anything, well, what's the point of me believing that I have all power? Thank you, Jesus. If I don't do anything with my faith, it's not profiting me anything and it's not profiting anyone else anything either. But rather that faith is belief in action. It's when you hear a word, a promise, or an instruction, and you begin to govern your lives and govern your steps and order your steps according to the word that you heard. That's why the Bible says that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The word of God will include a promise. It will include instructions. It will include a destination for you to get to. And it is up to you to do the same thing that Abraham did when he heard that promise of God saying, come out from your land and from your kindred unto a land that I will show you. God didn't tell him where he was going, but it required faith for Abraham to take that first step to leave everything behind at the simple word of God that is spoken over his life. So by that word that was spoken to Abraham, faith entered Abraham. Abraham and he told Sarah and Lot and all of his people, pack up because we're going someplace that God is taking us to. And I'm telling us here tonight, the same is for us. God has a word for us. God has promises for his church. God has a destination he's trying to get us to. But it is up to us to take that word and say, you know what, honey? You know what, baby? We're going to pack up. We're going to move toward the destination. We're going to go towards where God is calling us, even if we have to leave everything behind. Well, where were you going? I don't know. And it doesn't matter. But God God is going to lead me, and God is going to show me, and God is going to guide me. And when I get there, just like Abraham, he'll tell him, lift up your head and look to the north and to the south and to the east and to the west. All the land that you see, everywhere that your feet has given you, have I given unto thee. But I cannot tell you, you cannot get there unless you move off of what you believe now. It's faith been polluted and perverted this word faith people think that it just requires nothing just some, some sort of mental ascent they equate it to salvation well see you don't have to do anything to believe all it requires is faith well according to Hebrews 11 if you read the rest of the chapter every person that is recorded of having faith did something by faith X Y and Z did A B and C not by faith it just happened Thank you, Jesus. Jane will say, you show me your faith without your works, and I'll show you my faith by my works. So it is obvious, it should be obvious to us that faith requires some action or works, because without that, it's dead. It is not alive. And we are not called to be dead. We've been quickened by the Holy Ghost. So you got to get to work. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. But it's when you take what you believe and you act according to that belief and nothing happens right away where discouragement comes in. As a matter of fact, the introduction of this chapter says this in Hebrews chapter 1. It says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Everybody see that? It's the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. So faith is really the substance of hope. Right. Hope, the, the, everybody have hope? Yeah. Can you see it? <laughs> can, you, can you grab onto it? Can you say, there it is? No, you can't. But that's what faith is, though. It's the evidence of the invisible. Yeah. Praise God. And the sooner we realize this, I believe the sooner we will stop letting the visible dictate our faith. Stop letting the lack of evidence control our actions. Stop letting the absence of the substance control our hope. I don't see anything happening, so I'm not going to believe anymore. Praise God. I don't feel God, so I don't think he is with me. Praise God. Which means often we are believing for things that we can't see, touch, feel, or even understand. Yet God is still saying, that's what, exactly what I'm looking for out of you. I want you to believe. Which means the very nature of exercising your faith will be opposition in your reality. What you believe will probably not be manifest when you believe it. 
Take the example of Abraham. Come out to a land that I will show you. Where am I going? I can't see it. Don't matter. Just go. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. We must believe even though we don't see. And everything around us in this natural world is painting a different picture. Our faith doesn't waver. Even when all hope seems to be gone, we still have some substance of hope. Even when there's no evidence that what we're believing will come to pass, we still have evidence. This then shows us, and probably you will be able to agree with me, that it is easy to get discouraged when you have been exercising your faith and believing in God, but have yet to receive what you have believed for. That's frustrating. God, you told me if I would only believe. You said anything I ask in your name. You said you're able to do exceeding abundantly above all that I could ask or think according to the power. All of these promises that are lined up in front of us. And lots of times we will exercise our faith once, twice, five, ten times. But there's a tendency to give up when you have no evidence. When you have no substance. And all of your circumstances around you are telling you, stop believing. Praise God. It's at these times that we must not give up hope and lose faith. But we've got to believe again. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Have faith again. again. Pray again. Go again. Ask again. Why? Because he is a rewarder of those who diligently. Somebody say diligently. Diligently seek him. Thank you, Jesus. Now, I'm not going to be before you long today, but I believe the Lord is going to do something special in here today. You may not be jumping and shouting, but we're going to get victory anyhow. First of all, love never gives up. 1 Corinthians 13, verse 7. I'm going to read this in the NLT because King James says charity. And if you're not careful, you won't understand charity. Because that doesn't really mean much to us in our modern day English language. Love is a more appropriate term. So 1 Corinthians 13, verse number 7 says love never gives up. Never loses faith. Is always hopeful. And endures through every circumstance. Praise God. See, the reason why this is so important when we're talking about believing is that life can put us through some tough and hard situations. Some trying times, some traumatic times. And if we're not careful, these things can rob us of our belief and rob us of our faith. When you've been in a situation for years and years and years and nothing has changed, you begin to believe that it will never change. When you've prayed for something for years and nothing seems to be answered, you believe that, well, maybe it's the will of God for me to be in this situation. Maybe it's the will of God for them not to be saved. Maybe it's the will of God for X, Y, and Z. Put your own situation in the picture, but you stop praying for it. You stop you stop asking God for it. You stop believing for it. You stop acting for it. You stop pursuing after that because your faith has been robbed by what you can see and by what you perceive. Sometimes your faith is robbed by the pain of a situation. Sometimes your faith is robbed because of bitterness that is set in your heart for a little while. Sometimes your faith is robbed because you don't have anybody around you to speak faith into you. Sometimes your faith is robbed because you've left the house of faith. Come on, somebody. Sometimes your faith is robbed because you're simply around the wrong situation and around the wrong circumstances. And, well, it's always been like this, so it'll never change. And I've always had this pain, so I'm always going to have this pain. And I've always had this flaw so I'm always going to have this flaw in my marriage has always been on the rock so it's never going to get any better and my children have always been hard headed so they're never going to change and uh, my God I've always done this and you begin to lose faith for what God can do uh, even though the word of God says he's able to do exceeding abundantly you don't believe it because you have no evidence to see it your situation and your circumstances is saying nothing will ever change uh, nothing will ever get any better they'll never come back uh, this will never happen uh, blah 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 and the devil will help you out because he wants to beat you 
up and make you just as hopeless as he is in his misery. But I come here to preach to us today that love never gives up. Love never loses faith. Love never loses hope. Love endures through every circumstance. And I'm so glad that after 26 years, God said, ah, he's never going to change. Ooh, praise God. I'm so glad that after 26 years, God has said, I'm giving up hope on Brandon. I've been pulling and tugging at him for X how long. I'm giving up hope on him. He's done some stuff that's real bad now. God didn't do that to me. After 26 years, God didn't do that to me. He's shown me a difference, praise God. This is why I've got to praise God and I've got to worship God because he didn't give up on me. He was able to do the impossible in my life even when I wasn't checking for God. God was able to turn my whole situation around. Somebody said God is still working on every side. Oh God. You got to grab hold of this. I talk to people in different situations and they just said, Pastor, I've just given up hope. I've always had this. Well, this has always been the situation. Marriages, just giving up hope. My spouse will never, will never be have a. And so they get divorced because they don't have any hope there. That's gone. They don't have any, the, the substance of that hope is gone. And the evidence of what they believe for is, is not there. So they're just like, well, what, what's, what's the point of even praying? Give up on, on children. What's the point? They're gone. Give up on the miraculous. Think that disease is an inheritance of the people of God. That that's somehow the thorn in your flesh. That's not the thorn that Paul had in his flesh. God is still able to heal you. Even if it takes 38 years to raise you at the pool of Bethesda. Even if it takes 12 years, my God, to heal that issue of blood. My God, even if you've been dead for four days, when Jesus shows up, there's nothing impossible for our God. Nothing impossible for us. Why? Because love never gives up. Love never gives up. Love never gives up. Uh, today I come to tell you that don't beat yourself up if that's you. Don't do it. Because uh, I've been there myself. You just said, uh, what's the point? Thank you, Jesus. And, and uh, Jesus' own disciples aren't absent from this experience either. Have a often we we preach the two verses after this. We don't really preach this verse. I'm gonna preach it tonight. Praise God. Mark 16, Mark 16. If 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 you're here on Sundays, you'll probably say verse number 16. He that believeth and is, or verse 15. Go ye and teach all nations, preach the gospel to every creature, and all that. But look at verse 14. Mark 16, verse 14. You got it, up, brother Bill? I can't see. There it is. Afterward, he appeared unto the eleven, as they sat at meat. And upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. My God. Now, this is during that 40-day period where Jesus was teaching and dealing with his disciples about things pertaining to the kingdom. And during this time, he appeared to his disciples on multiple occasions. But this is the only gospel that records the fact that he wasn't all that pleased with them. He wasn't all that happy. Why? Because without faith, it's impossible. So here's, here's what the situation was. Just three days prior, they were full of faith, full of encouragement about Jesus and this gospel. 12 disciples, at that time it was 12 because Judas was still among them, even though he was going to betray them. They were full of, they didn't even argue who's going to be the greatest in the kingdom. You, me, Jesus. Somebody's mama came in and said, hey, I'm putting in my lot for my boys. Can you just do me a favor? Make them sit at your. <laughs> on fire for God, isn't they? Because there's going to be times where you're on fire for God. Church services, on fire for God. Been praying, on fire for God. Seeing the miracles happen, on fire for God. 
got a breakthrough, got a renewed passion for prayer, and the word of God is starting to light up in your head again, and you start wanting to read the Bible on your own, you know, that type of on fire for God. Or you start sliding stuff out of your life to make time to be in his presence, that kind of on fire for God. Woo. These men, three days prior, Brother Elliot, on fire for God. Mm. Peter even pledged, I'll die for you, Jesus. Uh -huh. And he, he meant it, too, because, you know, he pulled out that sword. And, but none of them knew what was really in store for their lives, that their faith would be tested like no other. And over the course of three days, they had to watch their master as his, he was taken captive. They had to watch him as he was tortured. They had to witness the whole nation of Judea turn against Jesus and send him to the cross. In a matter of days, Jesus, their leader, their master, their Lord, their God, went from riding triumphantly on a donkey into Jerusalem to the whole congregation shouting, crucify him. And his disciples standing right there like, okay, mm. The reality damaged their faith in ways that they were not prepared for. Their faith was so damaged that they didn't even believe the good news that Jesus was alive. They already didn't believe he was going to raise up because they would have been on there on the grave waiting for him. Like, we was waiting. You kind of late, Jesus. Mary didn't believe him. She didn't go there to greet him. She came there to anoint him for a proper burial. And this is family, relatives, disciples, people that he had raised from the dead, some of them. That's right. That's right. Had seen the works of God with their own eyes. Had participated in the miracles. Ah, and nobody was there to greet him, give him a welcome back party. And he didn't even abrade him for that. There were people that saw him alive and went to go tell the disciples that, hey, I know y'all not there, but Jesus is, he's up. And even that, didn't believe. And so when Jesus shows up, he's like, y'all even had a witness that I was alive, and you didn't believe? Where is your faith at? Mm. See, we never know what it's really like until it shows up at your front door. Until life shows up at your front door. Until situations show up at your front door. Until you experience betrayal for yourself. Uh, oh, praise God. Until you experience some hurts and transgressions for yourself. Until you experience a sickness for yourself. You can say, I got faith to believe for God for anything. But you never know when that, I mean, God, coronavirus showed us that if nothing else. We'll live for God, and we'll do this, and we'll do this. And I found myself having to get in my room and say, okay, Lord, you got to take this fear from me because I'm not, I'm not so sure what's going to happen right now. And bless God, he showed up and took that fear away. But it was real. I said I would die for the Lord. I said I would go to jail for God. But when it actually showed up, Brother Bo, I had to pray about it. I was like, mm, am I really ready to go to prison for this thing so just for preaching the gospel when they told me I couldn't have church? Am I really ready? You can say it all day. You can say it all day. But that devil will make sure that what you believe in is the opposite of what your reality is. You believe in for revival, he's going to try to show you the opposite. You been believing for a miracle of healing in your body, the pain might turn up every time you pray. Hallelujah. That's why it's the substance of what you hope for. It's the evidence of what you cannot perceive or see by your natural senses. That means regardless of what it looks like on the surface, I've got to press through on what I know to be true by the word of God. And Jesus found, rose from the dead and found those same disciples and showed himself. Which means he was able to even resurrect not only himself, he was able to resurrect their faith. And that's what some of us need to pray here tonight. Lord, resurrect my faith. I stopped believing in stuff. I stopped praying for stuff. I stopped going after some things. Praise God. 
bring me to my second point. Believe regardless of what it looks like. Believe regardless of what it looks like. 2 Corinthians 5 and 7, for we walk by faith and not by sight. You need to memorize that verse. For we walk by faith and not by sight. This verse, this scripture encapsulates, encapsulates everything that we need to put into practice. It says first that we walk. That means we're not standing still. We're not going backwards. We're walking. We're moving forward. That means there must be some action in your life propelling us to our destination of what we believe in, uh, and that is Jesus Christ. We cannot be idle Christians. That is a curse, comfortable and idle Christians. You're not walking or going nowhere. You're sitting still. Praise God. My Bible says, blessed when he come that he shall find doing, not just sitting still. Somebody say, we walk. And we don't walk by sight, but we walk by faith, praise God. Which means that every step we take is directed by the faith that we possess. Praise God. See, that walking speaks of an action. It means that's what you're doing, the steps that you're taking. That means that every step you take must be a step towards what you believe and are praying for and not towards what it looks like. I don't care what the doctor says. Walk by faith. I don't care what your pedigree says. Walk by faith. I don't care what your resume says. Walk by faith. Come on, you're starting to get it now. I don't care what the pain in your body says. Walk by faith. I don't care what the five last years of your marriage is. Walk by faith. I don't care where your children are right now and what they're doing. That's what it is in the natural. Walk by faith. Let your faith determine your action. Let your faith determine your prayer. Let your faith determine the next step that you will take. Praise God. Not by sight because what we can see and perceive and touch and feel should not determine my actions. Hallelujah, Jesus. We ought to grab hold of that and run with it because everything else in this world, we got to work within the confines of what we are in. Praise God. <laughs> you can have a whole lot of faith, but if you only got two nickels rubbed together <laughs> and you go to the candy store, that dude that you're talking to might not have the same faith that you have. <laughs> Praise God. He's going to like, I'm going to need those two nickels for this. So you got limitations in this natural world. Am I making sense? But with God, he's limitless. That means if we can believe him for it and we can go to him diligently, we will achieve what we believe. Praise God. Because it's the power of God working in us. It means I can't look at just, oh man, we're just about 60, 70 of us here. How are we going to get to 1,000? It doesn't matter. Praise God. I'm not looking at what this is right now. We're looking towards the destination. So our actions are not determined by what we have now. Our actions are determined by what we expect God to do in the future. My God. You got to operate your whole life like that. I'm not saving money based off of what it is right now. Bless God. I'm going for what the future will be. I'm going for what I can't see and what I hope for. Praise God. That's why we practice holiness because John already told us if we have this hope, then we purify ourselves. Why? Because I'm preparing myself for a place that's not here yet. I'm preparing myself for a kingdom that hasn't come to this earth just yet. Praise God. I'm preparing myself to be in glory with Jesus Christ. I'm not living for this world. I've got a hope that is greater than this world, that is better than this world, that is soon future to come. And so because of that, my actions determine something completely different than what this world is. It's difficult to accomplish because we need the help of the Holy Ghost to walk by faith. Somebody say, I need some help. Because our reality can become louder than our faith. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. Our reality is like Goliath standing in the valley, so yeah, shouting, send me a man. Forty days, he shouting, send me a man. That's what, that's what, that's what your opposition, that's what the enemy does. He's a, he's a good talker. He's going to shout and rebuke you as much as he can. And he had a whole army of Israel trembling in fear because they saw a giant. And they saw his armor, and they saw his sword, and they saw his shield, and they saw his track record. And then they're looking at their own natural selves. I can't measure. Not even Saul was bigger, and he was head and shoulders above everybody else. But he was trembling just like everybody else. But it took an old shepherd boy that had faith and a promise, didn't even quote the giant's stature, didn't even call him by name. 
only thing he called him by was the promise of God. Who is this uncircumcised? You have no promise, you have no right, you have no inheritance. So David could afflict a grape at his forehead, and Goliath was going down. Some of y'all don't act like y'all believe that. David could have thumped a grape at four because Goliath had to go down based off of the word of God and the promises of God. And here are all these carnal soldiers. Here, come, come fight Saul with what I've got. Ha. That's why you got to get around people with faith. Praise God. Because your reality will become louder. Louder than your faith. It will magnify and exalt itself. Praise God. The only way we can get over this is if we get lost in the spirit of God. Thank you, Jesus. Sometimes you just need to escape everything that's bombarding you. You have those moments where stuff just, this is going wrong. That is going wrong. This has now gone wrong. That is going wrong. I got pain here and this hurts. Cramping here and this. Everything naturally is coming against you. And it's hard to pray in full belief at that moment because all you can experience is what's in the natural. I don't see anything different. I don't know anything different. But if we can get lost in the spirit of God, the reality of the situation won't matter anymore. God will give us the faith we need to believe again. And the Bible says in the next chapter of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter number 12, verse 1 and 2, it says, basically after going about all of these heroes of the faith in chapter 11, he starts off 12 with, Wherefore, seeing we are also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, because we have so many heroes of faith that came before us, because they've shown us the way, here's the recommended dose for us. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. He said, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Verse 2, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. How do I believe again? Take your eyes off of your problem. Take your eyes off of the reality that you find yourself in. Take your eyes off of the pain and the diagnosis that's sitting right in front of your hands. Take your eyes off of your current situation and this happening and this happening. And look to who? Look to Jesus. Why? Because he's the author, which means he began it. He orchestrated it. He created it. He gave it to you. And the finisher, which means he's going to be the one to complete it. He's going to be the one to cause it to grow, to cause it to mature, to cause it to be like fruit growing inside of you. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. And then it tells you how he got over. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. That means Jesus, as he was hanging on the cross, he didn't have his mind on the nails in his hands. Praise God. He wasn't focusing on the crown of thorns that was pressed into his skull. He had the, the scars on his back wasn't his focus. He was looking at the joy that was on the other side of the cross. Can I tell you, you cannot do that in your flesh. You cannot do that in your flesh. You cannot do it even in isolation. You've got to be around some people of faith. Uh, and you've got to be in the spirit of God. Uh, when all hell breaks loose uh, and everything around you is telling you to give up um, and stop believing. Uh, and what's the point of praying? Uh, and what's the point of asking for it again? Uh, what's the point of believing for it again? Uh, you've got to go to the spirit of God uh, and say, Lord, hallelujah. I'm laying every burden down on God. I'm laying every care down on God. I need an escape from this situation uh, and escape from my reality. Uh, my eyes are fixed on Jesus uh, and not the storm that I'm currently going in, uh, my God, uh, because fixing my eyes on him uh, allows me to believe again. To believe again. It takes me out of my reality uh, over to my destiny uh, where God can give me strength uh, to pray the prayer of faith again. Uh, hallelujah, Jesus. Woo. 
That means even when we don't see our prayers come to pass, we can't stop believing because he's a rewarder. He's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Thank you, Jesus. Last point is push. Pray until something happens. God specializes in last-minute miracles. I'm testimony, man. No, he's, he's just last minute or late to us. He's on time to him. That's right. <laughs> he's, he, he's right on time. He's not late. He's not early. We think, Lord, you're early. Your Lord, you're late. Nope. Right on time. <laughs> it might be late according to your schedule, but God's not on your schedule. God invented the schedule. <laughs> Praise God. What would seem to be late is on time. Man at the pool of Bethesda, lame, 38 years. Then Jesus shows up. Woman with the issue of blood, 12 years, broke. Then if she just gets a hold of Jesus. Lazarus, dead, four days. Then Jesus shows up, calls him from the dead with three words. He didn't even give him a word per day. Thank you, Jesus. Even when Jesus died, everybody thought it was over and done. But God wasn't done yet. The devil didn't even know. <laughs> he was saying if he would have known, they would have never crucified him. If he would have known the blow that was going to come to his head, <laughs> he would have never sent him to the cross. So how can we think we got God figured out? That is somehow impossible. Well, fortunately, he specializes in doing the impossible. Matthew 19, 26, Jesus beheld them and said unto them, with men, this is impossible. But with God, all things, all things are possible. Praise God. That's the faith that we need to have. Let me give you a clue. Don't let nobody talk you out of that faith. Nobody. 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 You know what I mean? Realtors, I told me, told me when I, I wasn't going to be able to find the space in South Tampa for that price that I was looking for. Whew, you're going to have a hard time. You don't know my God, do you? I, I, don't, I don't think that's going to be able to happen, Brother John. They told me, you don't know my God. Even the landlord here didn't think we'd be able to do this. So watch. He don't know my God. Why am I let people that don't know my God, don't serve my God, not saved by my God, not filled by my God, tell me about my God? We're listening to too much of the world. You tell them to kick rocks. They don't know nothing. People laugh at you. <laughs> okay, well, go ahead. Oh, yeah, you, you, yeah, you better believe. I'm going to go right on ahead. I'm going to go right on ahead. And I'm away, but you're on the other side, like, hi, thank you, Jesus. Look at what God has done. Thank you, Jesus. Don't let nobody talk me out of it. You can't do it. Watch. Watch. You just watch. Talk me out of a job. You're not qualified. Watch me. You don't have a degree, so you can't get that kind of money. Watch me. I need y'all faith to come up in here. We got to find this. This kingdom of God. Y'all going to have to. Apply for a job you're not qualified for. That's right. With men, this is impossible. But with God, there's no qualification to that, Brother John. That means if I believe God enough, he can cause me to fly. I can be the flying pastor. He probably won't do that, though, because y'all wouldn't see me. <laughs> I got to keep him on the earth. <laughs> Praise God. He did teleport a preacher, though. I'm, I am asking for that miracle. I'm believing for that one, sis. I want to be teleported in Jesus' name. I just hope it's not in the process of me being stoned. <laughs> Something like that. That's how he works, you know. You got to suffer with him, too. Praise God. <laughs> but there's nothing impossible for God. There's nothing impossible for God. I'm, I'm staying right here because we got to believe that. You choose your hardest family member, God can save. 
Pick the hardest one and pray for that one the most. I want you to start with the hardest to build my faith. That way I can reach all the ones that I think is easy. Start with the hardest one. Praise God. God can say, Lord, give him the hardest disease. Bring it on. Nothing is impossible for him. Nothing is impossible for God. Nothing is impossible for God. Nothing is impossible. I'm going to say it to you, believe. Nothing is impossible for God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Nothing is impossible for him. It's us that put the limitations on. It's because, you know, uh, history has taught us a different lesson than faith has taught us. Right. Now, history says, well, you know, I've, I've done that before, but it hasn't worked. My history says, yeah, I prayed for this healing before, and it hasn't worked. I prayed for it five times, and it hasn't worked. I prayed for it ten times. I've been praying for it for ten years. And it just hasn't. And then here's what you'll do. Maybe it's just the will of God. Come on now, I'm not telling you nothing. Now. I haven't done it myself. Maybe it's just the will of God. Then I got rebuked. No. He said, whatever you ask in my name. He said, if you can touch and agree. He said, with him, nothing is impossible. I can do all things through Christ. That so what has changed, God or me? What has changed? I believe for it once. Why can't I believe for it again? And why can't I believe for it again? And why can't I believe for it again? And then why can't I believe for it again? He hasn't changed. Maybe he's just waiting to see how diligently I'll see. Tell you the truth and be transparent with you. There's stuff that's going on in this place, and I'm like, Lord, I don't know. I know you're doing God. Your word says that you're able to do it. And you find yourself giving up on praying for people, giving up on praying for certain things. God, God will beat me over the head saying, No, son, look at my word. Show me one disease that I couldn't heal. Show me one family I couldn't put back together. And God is saying, just believe again. What if you're one more belief away from it happening? What if you're one more prayer away from it coming to pass? What if you're one more intercession away? What if you're one more request away? One more church service away. My God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to believe it again. We're going to believe it again. Believe it again. What does that mean? Well, I keep saying that. Well, let's, let's make sense out of it then. Sometimes you can just stop believing for it because it hasn't happened. And so what that means is that we've got to pray like we haven't prayed for it yet. Ask like you haven't asked yet. Like it's the first time you're asking. Remember the first time you asked somebody for something? You believe with all your heart that you're going to get it. At least you probably should. <laughs> but if, if you hear no and no and no and no, eventually, I see this in my children. Some of them got, you know, more faith. Or at least, oh, let's see, that's not right. Some of them more diligent. And some of them need help with their faith. I part the two of them. They're sitting right there. Ilya and Cam, I'll take them too. Cam's the most diligent one I got. It doesn't matter how many times I say no to that boy. He didn't come back like I never, like, didn't I just tell you? <laughs> no. 
15 minutes later, Daddy, can, can, can I have a snack? <laughs> no. No. But eventually, <laughs> because of the diligence that the Lord put in that boy, just, just go and get a bag of chips here. <laughs> no, I ain't helping. You got to go get this stuff. And he'll get it. And here's the miracle of faith. His faith will grow everybody else's his faith. Because when they see him with chips, <laughs> the other one will, he said he's trying to hide it. No, bro, you better share that faith. Praise God, share that blessing. Thank you, Jesus. The others will see how the Lord and bless him. Oh, I didn't think daddy was going to do it. <laughs> it's not that they didn't want it. And some of them will slide about it. Someone will slide. Someone will tell on the other one. But they really wanted to. Daddy Cam got a bag of chips. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know. I told him he could. Oh, well, can I get one? <laughs> you ever been jealous of somebody get something in the house of God you ain't getting? Uh, I didn't get that miracle. I need money, too. You have a hard time rejoicing with them that rejoice. Have you a day? You ain't dancing with nobody. <laughs> Praise God. We do the same thing. But it's that persistence. And Jesus told us that. Luke 18, 1, 1 and 8. And he spake a parable unto this end that men ought always to pray and not faint. Saying there was a city, there was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. So this is a wicked judge, by the way. He don't fear God. He don't care about you. And there was a widow in that city. So this is a person who is at a disadvantage because she don't have a husband anymore. And in these times, having a husband would, would, would put you at a certain social economic status. And she came unto him saying, avenge me of mine adversary. And he would not for a while. Just like that daddy said, nope, not doing it. Not doing it. But afterward, he said within himself, though I fear not God, nor regard man, Yet because this widow troubleth me, she's annoying. She's persistent. She's going to come back. She probably wanted multiple a days, two or two, three a days. Lord, avenge me. Avenge me. Avenge me. And this parable really speaks to what the church is supposed to be praying. Lord, avenge us. Avenge us. Souls out here that the devil has stolen. Avenge us. Family members that he's stolen. Avenge us. Kids we have that are not saved. Avenge us. Lest continually, look, he said, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge saith. And shall not God avenge his own? own elect which cry day and night unto him though he bear long with them I tell you that he will avenge them speedily nevertheless when the son of man come shall he find faith on the earth and this is the words of Jesus because sadly, we deficit naturally in our faith when it comes to prayer. If I'm preaching to you that God will heal you and can heal you, and you come up and pray for healing and you don't get it, naturally what's going to happen? Your faith is going to fail. And then let's say we do that for a month straight, or a year straight, or two years straight. Eventually, you can probably be like, man, that preacher is a liar. But Jesus said, showing this example, that this is an unjust judge that doesn't care about God and doesn't care about the woman who's making this petition. And even this unjust, wicked judge will fulfill the request because of her persistence. And we serve a God that is much greater than this unjust judge. 
who loves us and died on the cross for us. Who gave us promise after promise and word after word, telling us what our inheritance was. Telling us the power that would reside in us. Telling us that if we can believe, nothing is impossible for him. Telling us that if we'll ask anything in his name, he's going to do it. Telling us that it's his will for all to be saved. That he really died for the whole world. Praise God. He told us that we shall lay hands on the sick. And they shall recover. He said, you'll cast out devils, you'll speak with new tongues. He told us greater works than these shall you do. Because he's going away. Promise after promise, he's going to raise us again. He's going to resurrect these bodies. We're going to be turned into immortal beings. From imperfection to perfection, to glorified bodies with him. This is the faith that Jesus has spoken into us, but yet we give up on it. We give up on it. This is what he meant when he says pray and not faint. Not that you should be always in the act of praying, but that you need to go with the same faith that you did the first time that you prayed. The same faith. The same expectation. Thank you, Jesus. And it should not decrease because if we know our God, the more we ask him, that means the more it should increase. That's right. The probability goes up the more I ask. Yes, both sides yes. That's right. Just do the math. The probability goes up. He's going to do it. It's just a matter of when. That's right. mm, thank you, Jesus. It's just a matter of time. We don't, we, just, see, we don't operate by the world's logic. That's why the world doesn't get us. They don't understand us. How can you believe and how can you put yourself in danger? And how? Because I'm not operating by your logic. Praise God. Uh, I'm operating off of a supernatural. Praise God. Uh, the truth and the life. You can't understand it. If you're going to come to God, uh, you must believe that he is. Uh, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Uh, that means the next time I ask it. Uh, I should be expecting it to happen more than the last time uh, because I'm asking again uh, and I'm asking again uh, and I'm getting closer and closer to the evidence um, and closer and closer to the substance, my God, uh, and closer and closer to the destination uh, because Jesus is the author and the finisher of my faith. Thank you, God. So, I'll leave you with just some practical points. I know I preached long. I'll, I'll wrap it up now. How do I believe again? I don't want to leave you with a sermon like this just in the air because you might be confused on what to do. First off, you must look to Jesus. He's the author. He's the finisher of your faith. And this is, we have a very clear picture of this with Peter when he gets out the boat. And he's walking in the water. You can interpret this however you want to. But essentially when his eyes went off of Jesus and on the storm, he began to sink. And he, that means it wasn't his own ability that was keeping him. It was his faith and belief in Jesus that was sustaining him above what would normally be an impossible situation. That's right. That's right. So while all hell is breaking loose and all the storms are in your life and everything that you can see says one thing, we need to be believing, acting, and looking towards another thing. Praise God. You got to be careful. Hallelujah, Jesus. Let me go on to my next one. Philippians 4, verse 4 and 7. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. This is why you got to be a praiser and you got to be a worshiper of God. Because, hallelujah, praise and worship brings you into the presence of God and it is able to remove you out of your current situation. Where I'm not thinking about my pain no more. I'm just worshiping. I'm not thinking about my, my situations at home. I'm just giving God the glory. I'm not thinking about my bank account. I'm just worshiping and lifting him up in praise. And when I do that, all of those things begin to leave. And all of a sudden, God can deal with me. Faith can come in me. Joy can come in me. Peace can come in me because I'm rejoicing in the Lord. Praise God. Always and again I say rejoice. Praise God. He said, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, uh, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. We've got a formula to remove ourselves out of this world. 
You know what I do when all hell breaks loose and this person calls and this person calls and then the AC breaks and this happens and this happens? I remove myself. Oh, Jesus, I'm getting a little anxious. I'm getting a little worried. I got a headache. I got a migraine. This is going wrong. This is going wrong. How do I handle it? I'm going to pray. And I'm going to pray and separate and just, I'm cutting, I'm cutting the phone off. Oh, praise God. I'm cutting it off. I'm setting it to the side. I'm going somewhere alone to pray where I can escape, praise God, where I can escape all of the troubles of this world. My God, listen to David in Psalm 61. Hear my cry, O God. I'm tending to my prayer. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For thou hast been a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy. I will abide in that tabernacle forever. I will trust in the covert of thy wings, Salah. You got to know where your tower is. You got to know where your shelter is. You got to know where your peace is. And say, hold up. This world is robbing my faith. I need a refuge. I got to run someplace. I need to go hide. Let me go find God and get my faith back and get my joy back and get my peace back. That way I can believe again. Ha. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody say you got to get away. Get away from all of this. Get away from your troubles. Huh. People do this in the world naturally. Just where they run to don't work. You know, and man, we go to the gym, start working out. We play PlayStation games. Start drinking. Going on the internet, doing stuff you shouldn't do. That's an escape. Clubbing. Sometimes you just want to kick back and put on a good movie to release. That's why theaters got big in the first place. They got big during the Great Depression because people wanted an escape. Yeah. So they would go use these natural vehicles for escape. Well, the problem is they're not giving you anything. So you, you come right back. And don't get me wrong with God, your problem's still there. But if I go to God, I get peace. It passes all understanding. I get joy, unspeakable, full of glory. I get fruit of spirit, love, patience, faith is one of those. I get something to strengthen me to keep going and pressing on and not let my external situations determine my actions. I get something if I go. If I go to these worldly venues, I don't get nothing. Sometimes I get an addiction. You'll get some bad habits. You'll get some bad thoughts. You'll get a dirty mind. Mm. Secondly, you got to get in the word of God. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Get in the word of God. If you got friends around you don't know no word, get, get, around, get around some people of faith. They can speak faith into your life. That when you are feeling a little bit shaky and feeling a little anxious and worried and you got anxiety. You got a brother or sister saying, you know what, it's going to be all right. I'll pray with you. This is not the end. It's just the beginning. God's going to do something great in your life. Let's pray. We're going to go to the kingdom of God together on this. Man, I read this prematurely, but secondly, you got to learn to retreat from hearing what I'm saying. I said it already. David said, lead me to the rock. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For it's a shelter to me. It's a strong tower from the enemy. He said, I will abide in that tabernacle forever and trust in the covert of thy wings. So I close with this. Don't let this world and life situations rob us of our faith. Give it to God and let's believe again. Come on, let's all stand as we close here tonight. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to ask you, you don't have to shout it out loud, it might be embarrassing. What is it that you stop praying for? What is it that you stop believing God for? I talked to a gentleman a little while ago, I won't mention his name, but he'd been had, he's been dealing with something for most of his life. He said he just kind of gets discouraged when people say, well, you know, God can heal or God can do it, you know. What is it? Is there something like that in your life? Let's believe. Let's believe God again. Believe it again, Brother Al. 
Only you know what that is. Only you can believe for what is it. I can't believe it for you. I can pray with you. I can encourage you. But you've got to exercise your own faith. And let the Lord grow it in you. Come on, let's lift our hands and let's pray to the Lord right now. Let's repent, first of all, for our unbelief. Lord Jesus, we... Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, Jesus, Lord, I pray right now, God, Lord, for, that you forgive us, Lord, for our unbelief, Lord. We've allowed this life and situations, oh God, to, to try our faith, oh God. We've allowed these things to test us, Lord God, and to... to, 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 to to subtract from our faith, Lord God, but I pray here tonight, Lord God, that you'd forgive us, Lord. I pray, Lord God, that you would forgive us, Lord God. Forgive us, Lord God, for not be pleasing unto you, Lord Jesus, oh God. But I pray here tonight, Lord God, that faith would grow in us once more, oh God. Oh God, the prayers that we have, oh God, archived, Lord God, and put on the backlog, Lord God. Oh God, that they would be brought back to the forefront, Lord God. Dreams and visions, Lord. Words that you have spoken into our lives, Lord God. Let us believe on them again, Lord God. Lord God, you are the author, Lord, and the finisher of our faith. So I pray right now today, Lord God, oh God, that you would grow it in us, Lord Jesus. We bring it before you again, Lord God. But we trust, Lord God, that nothing is impossible for you, Jesus. We trust, Lord God, that nothing, oh God, there's nothing, oh God, that you can't do, Lord. So we pray again tonight, Lord God. We pray again tonight, Lord God. We ask again tonight, Lord God. We seek again tonight, Lord God. We're knocking again tonight, Lord God. For you gave us a sure word, a promise, Lord God, that you are a rewarder, Lord God, of them that diligently seek you, oh God. Oh God, I pray that you remove us, Lord God, from all the reality that we face, Lord God, and let us escape to a place alone with you, oh God, uh, where you, oh God, can speak and deal with us, Lord Jesus, uh, that our faith might grow, oh God, uh, that our love might grow, Lord Jesus, oh God, uh, that your glory can be done in and through us, Lord God, uh, that your will might be done on earth, Lord God, uh, as it is in heaven, Lord God. Uh, we trust you, oh Jesus. Uh, we believe in you, oh God, uh, and we exercise it tonight, Lord God, uh, believing you again, Lord God, uh, for the miraculous, Lord God. Believe in you, O King, O God. Soramosa, for the impossible, Lord God. Help us, Jesus, to expand our mind, O God. Help us, Jesus, to expand our knowledge, O God. Help us, O God, to come to you, Lord God, with renewed expectation, Lord God. With renewed faith, Lord God. With renewed determination, Lord God. To propose again, Lord God. To ask again, Lord God. To believe again. Again, Lord God, uh, Lord, we pray that.